The practice of cheese making is closely related to the domestication of milk producing animals. Cheese may have been discovered accidentally by the practice of storing milk, which would cause coallegation, separating into curds and whey. During the Great International Exhibition, Alexander Parkes presented his newly discovered invention, a material that could be molded into any shape when heated. When it cooled, it kept its shape. His invention would later be recognized as the first ever plastic. Later, in 1907, in New York, Leo Bakelin discovered the first 100% synthetic plastic. Once the plastic cooled down, it kept its shape forever. Nothing could alter its form, no matter what. Today, more than ever before, we feel the effects that plastic has on our environment and our health. Being a lightweight material able to withstand great amounts of strain, plastics are wildly and diversely used. Due to their durability, the degradation takes hundreds thousands of years. In recent years, finding an adequate alternative has become a top priority to environmental scientists. Many raw materials have been proposed as plausible alternatives. First generation feedstock are crops and plants used to produce bioplastics. They take away food used for human or animal consumption. The preferred type of raw material is classified as second generation feedstock, meaning that it is not edible biomass, allowing for its complete utilization. Whey, the liquid byproduct of cheese production, is one such material. Nine parts of whey are generated per one part of cheese manufactured. Approximately 50 million tons of cheese whey is produced in Europe annually. Although it is used in the bodybuilding industry, almost 40% of it is discarded directly into the environment, which is quite toxic if disposed onto farmland or into waterways. Due to its high biological oxygen demand, this byproduct becomes a major environmental problem. Yet, there is a possible untapped potential to it. It can be used as an alternative biodegradable bipolymer. Osogoska Mlekara, a local dairy farm in the village of Sokolarci, not far from our hometown Skopje, was happy to give away their excess whey to us. We processed the whey by heating it for 4 hours, resulting in solid whey protein concentrate that we then pulverized. Once we obtained the powder, we methacrylated the whey protein concentrate to chemically activate its proteins. Using a pipette, we added methacrylic anhydride to the whey protein concentrate. The mixture was then placed in a magnetic stirrer at room temperature for 18 hours. The methacrylated whey protein concentrate was copolymerized with PEGMA to form polyethylene-like plastic at two different ratios, 40 to 60 and 30 to 70. Timid acted as a catalyst and ammonium perisulfate acted as an initiator. We then poured each of the two resulting mixtures between two separate pairs of parallel glass plates and let them stand at ambient conditions for two hours to form gel-like sheets. The sheets were then peeled off and dried at 60 degrees Celsius for 46 hours to form elastomers. Finally, plastic films form. The 40 to 60 ratio showed greater density, yet it was more brittle after drying, whereas the 30 to 70 ratio was more flexible, had greater tensile strength, and was softer in texture. Thus, the polymers with protein to pegma ratio of 30 to 70 proved to be the optimal ratio. The obtained whey protein films could very well replace conventional plastics and be used as food packaging. With further research, we could find new commercial use replacing petroleum-based plastics with natural bioplastics. A range of packaging solutions can be derived using post-processes such as lamination, thermal forming, and thermal sealing. Therefore, whey plastic films could be available in tubes, laminated cans, trays, films, which would have a much lower environmental impact compared to ethylene-based plastic. As the price of fossil fuel-based plastics will continue increasing, and as the production volume of whey protein concentrate will increase, the whey film price could become even more advantageous. There are different areas of interest that could be further studied. Whey contains immunoglobins and glycomacropeptides, which help prevent bacterial infection. With further testing, we could determine their potential use as packaging for medical products. Based on the results exhibited in our project, Liquid Whey has proved to be a worthy competitor against the different raw materials used as alternative to conventional plastics. By using whey, a natural material that unfortunately gets thrown away, we can combat one of the greatest environmental issues of today.